Hi everyone, in this lecture I'm going to show you how to create a REST API in Flask. So in this lecture I'm going to serve the data that we have in the form of a REST API. So I'm going to create two more view functions. One is going to serve the list of questions and the other is going to serve individual questions. Whenever you're serving something from the server that is why it is called server because it serves data to a front end we are going to talk about that a little bit more in this lecture so in this lecture instead of returning html pages we are going to return the data in a file format known to you as json or json javascript object notation javascript object notation serving json instead of html from an http server is one of the definitions of a rest api a rest api stands for a representational state transfer api representational state transfer application programming interface that is the entire acronym uh, but in short we just say rest api we have uh, now this lecture is very exciting i'm really excited to teach you this because this is something that i've been waiting a long time to teach you how to create a rest api on the back end because this shows uh, that all the pieces of front end and back end they come together and you end up with a very very cool awesome uh, full stack web application that is going to get you hired of course don't forget that so um, we have um, already taken a, uh, taken a look at the Yelp API. We have more. We have done more than that. We have interacted with it a lot, and uh, in the Python package index, I think that was the section, and the data that was provided to our HTTP GET request was in fact through a REST API. Basically, when you make an HTTP request to a server from a front-end application so in this case this browser is uh, contains our front-end application and we are making a get request with uh, to this server you can see that in the terminal whenever you're doing that what you're actually doing is you are actually interacting um, uh, uh, with um, a rest api on the server rest api has the job of giving you the JSON data you requested, and then you request it, and then you can display it um, however you want in your application. That is what a REST API actually does. So what I am going to do is I'm going to create a REST API for our application that is going to grab all the questions of our application because I told you that we are going to make sure that this JSON file acts like a database. So in order for it to act like a database, I'm going to create a REST API. So if in case you have a JavaScript frontend, a React frontend, an Angular frontend, a Vue frontend, a Svelte frontend, doesn't matter what your frontend is, you will be able to consume these questions and use them in your application in any way that you want. The same way that we use the REST API data or the REST for response from the Yelp API. You remember that, right? So I'm going to come down here. Uh, I'm going to create. Uh, first off, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import JSONify uh, in the top. And that, I'm going to import that from the Flask module as well. So I'm going to say JSONify. Okay. Why is it not? Oh, it has to be a comma. JSONify. I'm just going to import that. There we go. I'm going to tell you why we are importing that in just a second. So first off, I'm just going to create, um, I'm going to say creating a REST, uh, REST API for our full-stack multi-page app. So this part is where we are going to create that REST API. So you can consume it if you have another front end apart from the one that we are working with so in here i'm going to say app.route so this part is simple we have done that we are going to use the attribute of the app, app uh, the app uh, object that we have imported we have created in the top 
Now, uh, what is going to be the URL? Now, a common convention for a REST API is to write the name of the API and the URL. And then where do you want the question to be? So, uh, we are going to create two, um, uh, two view functions. One is going to serve all the questions in the form of a REST, RESTful response. And the other one is going to serve each individual question in the form of a rest, restful response. So this is going to be question slash. This is going to grab all the questions. I'm going to create the view function for it. I'm going to say API question list. And in here, I'm just going to say return return jsonify and i'm going to pass in our data database so what is going to do is it is going to grab our database and it is going to convert it to a json object this function wraps to add uh, a few enhancements that make life easier let's read more about it it turns the json output into a class flask response there is a lot of technical stuff here but uh, what it actually does is it is going to grab our data database and it is going to convert it to a format that is readable for any front end that you might be having that you might want to work with and that readability will be shown within the browser as well so to be able to view a list of uh, a restful response, we need to go to this address. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put it right here. Let's click on it and there we go. Now, this is Im amazingly cool. Now, in case uh, the data is not shown in this case, I do have an extension that is JSON view. You can grab it from the Chrome, um, what is the name? It's the Chrome store or extension store. And that is whenever you come here, you just click on this, you go to extensions, oh, extension. And when you click there, you go to open Chrome Web Store. It is Web Store. Just click on it. And from there, you can just, uh, come on, buddy. We're going to wait for it for a couple of seconds. Very slow internet. You're just going to say JSON view. And when you hit enter, it is going to show you that extension. When you, there we go. I think this is the one. These two look the same. The, um, which one is it? So, which one is it? Is it this one? Remove. Oh, yeah, it is this one. So, it's the first one. Just go ahead and install that. And it is going to um, show this JSON file in a format that is actually readable for you. Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, this is a RESTful response. How can I consume it? Whenever you deploy your application to the server, you're going to have like a domain name right here, right? A URL for your website. Then whenever you copy all of the address, you copy that, you put it inside the async await function of your JavaScript in simple terms, you will be able to grab, you will be able to have access to all of this data. This is very cool, right? So we do have all of our questions. That is the first view function that I wanted to create. The second one is going to show us individual questions. So I'm going to say app.route. Um, I'm going to provide API. And I'm going to say question slash. We are going to use our parameter within this URL. So I'm going to say it has to be integer and it is index. So I'm going to say def. API underscore, let's create the view function for it. Question underscore, I'm just going to call it detail. And I'm going to pass an index here as well. Now I'm going to handle this for uh, errors as well. So I'm going to say try uh, return uh, DB. And whatever index it is that the user is trying to access. Now, you need to keep this in mind as well, that whenever you're creating a RESTful response or whenever you're creating an API that is going to serve a RESTful response, you're actually interacting with a developer. So the other side, so now that I'm creating this RESTful response, this REST API for this data, I am on the back end, right? I am, on, I am in the back end, I'm creating it. You have to keep that in mind that at the end of the day, 
whenever you're creating REST APIs, you are interacting with another developer on the front end. So you need to keep that in mind that you're uh, the person on the other side of this communication channel, which is API, is also a developer. So the developer will know what it means that whenever you have API slash question slash zero, one, two, three, the developer will know that that zero is an index for any of the data that you have in that application. Don't worry about it. The developer will know because the developer knows how to interact with a RESTful API. That's why in here, I'm just going to pass an index. Let's say you have a million questions in this database, right? The developer, let's say, wants to grab uh, a random question every time. So a random single question. So the, what the developer is going to do when, when they get this URL, they're going to provide a variable here at the end that is going to represent an integer in JavaScript, of course, and it is going to be a random number. So when you refresh the page, you're going to see it is one, then refresh it is like 1000, two, like 10, 50, whatever, something like that. So whenever you're going very technical in your RESTful API, don't worry about it because the, the, the person who is trying to interact with it will understand what it is that you've meant. Just make sure that you're following uh, common conventions that uh, if you are new to RESTful API, I do suggest that you try to create even more. You grab this application, create another one, another one, and just try to create as many REST APIs as you want. Go ahead, study them, go, to, go through the documentation. What is the syntax for REST API? What is the URL? How you should provide uh, documentation for that? Um, a, a good resource would be the Yelp API. The Yelp API provided like a very thorough documentation on how you could interact with the REST API to consume uh, their RESTful response inside your own applications to use it for your own means, for your own things, whatever you want. So you saw that there was a lot of documentation, right? So you can go ahead, read that. Uh, there is parameters in APIs, in API calls. There is a lot of stuff. So whenever you read that, it is going to give you an idea. Okay, when I'm developing a REST API, let's say I'm creating a website. There is like a sort of a Wikipedia kind of website for endangered species, something like that. That's a cool idea for a project. Then you're going to create a REST API for that as well. In case someone wants to consume that data into their own application, like a charity website, like a like a, an environmental kind of organization want to they want to grab that data and consume it within their own website. So you need to have proper documentation for your REST API. I'm getting off topic. That's not the focus of this course. Let's just go ahead and provide the accept. And I'm just going to say index error. The, everything else will be handled by very delicately, of course, by um, a flask itself. So I'm going to say abort, abort mission 404. There we go. So let's go to this API. So I'm just going to provide zero. This technically, it should show us every individual question. We do have an error in here. And uh, let me bring this up. Uh, up. Oh, oops, <laughs> this is APP. That, that's a typo. So let me run the server again. We are out of the server. Uh, let me run this. There we go. So this is the question which has an index of zero. And this is the question which has an index of seven. So if the, user, if the developer wants to consume only one question, they're going to go to this. But of course, it's not going to be localhost. You will have deployed the website by that time that, that you want the people, you want other developers to consume your data. So this shows, now there is something else that I need to show you, that, that I need to tell you that whenever you create these view functions, um, these uh, view functions, Flask automatically converts them into JSON objects and Flask will automatically return a RESTful response. And this shows how powerful Flask is, even though it is a micro framework. But you can see that we have done nothing here. We have basically said what it is that we want. The rest, all of that ha has been, 
handled or taken care of by the flask. Even though it's micro framework, it is a very, very powerful web uh, framework for creating web applications. Again, um, so uh, you know what? I'm not going to go over this anymore. It's been 15 minutes. I'm sure you've got everything there was inside this lecture. So that's it. See you in the next one.